Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody. This is Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 107. Wow, we're getting up there. So hey, I want to thank you very much for listening. I uh, appreciate all the feedback we get from our shows and the comments. Uh, a lot of very professional comments. Every once in a while, there's one out there <laughs> going, <laughs> what? <laughs> but it's interesting. Every time I do a show that I think is kind of get everybody frazzled, which is not always the views of this show. It's just a, a subject that we want to talk about. I keep thinking I'm going to get a bunch of hate mail, and I actually get a lot of really constructive feedback and it's really good stuff and uh, I urge people to read some of the comments and some of the shows that you see especially on the YouTube version of this and of course I need to remind you that we do make a YouTube version of this which uh, is just audio but we also have a regular podcast which you can find on TuneIn and uh, iTunes and uh, now we're on iHeartRadio and, of course, you can hear us on our radio station, um, Good Talk Radio, which is uh, on three times a day at different times, early morning, afternoon, one in the evening, where you can hear our older uh, episodes that uh, uh, we felt with some of our top episodes. And uh, you can also find our Arizona Talk Radio on Good Talk Radio, too. Got all that? <laughs> crazy stuff but anyway we are very very happy to have you listening to us and hearing your feedback and once again rv talk radio focuses on rv lifestyles whether it's good bad or ugly <laughs> so and we just talk about it and uh, bring up different views of it and then uh, kind of get go with your feedback on the next show so anyway uh today should be a very happy day because we're getting ready to join up with our own i our own RV, so we're looking forward to that. So yes, you heard correct, we are joining up with our RV, we're looking forward to it. Uh, in a week or so, uh, heading up to Central Oregon, so uh, I'm gonna actually drive up, it'll take me about two days to get up there, and uh, enjoy the drive if I can, and me, um, be me and Cinder. And uh, as soon as I get up there, that evening that I uh, uh, arrive, uh, I have to go pick up Sherry, who's flying up to meet me. So it will be kind of interesting because I've had the RV uh, up in very cold temperatures all winterized. So the question is, did Rob winterize correctly? <laughs> and, uh, so that'll be interesting to see how well I did on that. And uh, uh, we, you know, we're contemplating some new ideas for the RV here uh, uh, after the summer, probably. Um I want to. I kind of like to get it out of that cold wet, uh, uh, temperatures up up there in Central Oregon, and uh, kind of thinking about doing something with like Havasu, possibly the Baja Peninsula in Mexico, kind of hemming and hawing, maybe just taking it up to Page, Arizona, and leaving it up there set up at a certain locations or whatever we decide and uh, use it as kind of a vacation home and uh, get a little more use out of it. And um, our ultimate goal is, you know, we bought that new, so we financed it. So when we hit our retirement age for Sherry, that is all paid off. And so that's going to be kind of nice. We'll have this beautiful um, Montana, it's a 2013 uh, Montana, 3625 they call it, and uh, it'll be all paid for and you know we'll be in our golden years and hopefully we've taken good care of it to use it for traveling again and uh, um, off and on kind of stuff but I think we'll be kind of a home-based travelers and uh, which also uh, brings me to the subject that I want to talk about once again just to kind of um, shore it up a little bit but I want to talk about weekend warriors So I really, I, I still think that some of the video channels and all those folks uh, give the poor uh, weekend warrior people a bad rap because 
you know, those people, they're actually like 90% of the people actually use RVs. And so, you know, these full timers and these nomads and stuff like that, they're always complaining that all the weekend warriors come and fill up the RV parks and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, you know, that's the RV parks bread and butter. So, you know, especially when the people only come in for like the weekend or so, they're getting top dollar for their spaces. And, and uh, they actually are the ones that make it possible to have good RV parks. And, uh, uh, these guys passing through and these ones staying for the weekend and then you get to those RV parks with all of the amenities like the swimming pools and and uh, places to go play tennis and the kids can play and all that good kind of stuff that stuff costs money <laughs> and uh, so the next time you start kind of cursing those uh, weekend warriors uh, let's take a time to appreciate them and knowing uh, first of all they probably need a break more than anybody to uh, you know, at least escape the uh, world and live for the now for a couple of days before they go back to their nine to five jobs and kids and schools and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so uh, it's so nice to see, have a tool. And, and of course, most of the millennials and all the young and, uh, folks, uh, they're finding that RVs are uh, really a nice tool to go camping with and they've been able to go out and find one that's either new, uh, semi-used, or a uh, fixer-upper, and becomes their family um, get-together tool to escape. And boy, families need it more than ever. Now if they could just figure out a way to uh, go on that escape without cell phones and uh, video games, <laughs> they'll have it made. So, uh, uh, you know, that's uh, kind of another thing I kind of like like to discuss a little more in some uh show in the future is these uh what what to do about getting unplugged because uh if you're you know if you're really a good nomad or a good um full timer and stuff the other thing you probably need to learn how to is uh to really e escape and to live for the now and and be more of a minimalist and all that stuff is escape from the social media the more I think about this social media stuff, the more I think we're all just losing it. I think all of us. And I mean, of course, right here, I'm using social media just to talk to you. But uh, yeah, it's like you got to get to a point where we got to just shut this stuff down. And um, I've noticed a lot of the 90 percent folks that are RVers that don't have channels and don't do blogs and vlogs and stuff like that are also pretty good about. They're connected enough to, you know, talk to their kids and keep in contact with family and stuff like that and do their banking, pay bills and things like that. But they're just not into it. And, and you know, for sometimes you go, well, gosh, I can't believe that. And then the more I think about it, the more I'm going, well, maybe they know something we don't. Maybe that's something or model we should follow more is to get unplugged. And uh, in these weekend warriors, Unplug yourself if you can. Get those kids away from the cell phones, away from the games, and just talk to each other for God's sakes and enjoy your RV and where that RV takes you and learn to talk to each other. Learn how to sit at the table together. Learn to have your full attention on each other's conversations. Wouldn't that be a miracle? <laughs> Am I dreaming? Is it still possible? I'd love to hear your comments and feedback about that. Getting unplugged, getting the family unplugged, getting the kids unplugged, and just connecting again. Is it possible? And are you guys doing it? And how are you doing it? So I, I got to tell you, even though it's to not totally RV oriented, it's, uh, it's about gardening. And if you've been watching Outdoor Travel Channel at all, um, we uh, have been kind of do um, documenting uh, building what they call square foot gardening. And uh, we went all out and uh, we've tried to tape as much as we can of it. Kind of hard to do because it's kind of spontaneous and we have to kind of do it when Sherry's available and stuff. And Anyway, so the thing is, is our garden's gone nuts. And uh, if you want to find out how we built it, how we're doing square foot gardening, how we put in a watering system, those videos are just now coming out uh, of how we put the watering system in. But the big part is, is we're already harvesting from it. So we're already getting spinach. And 
you know me, I've been kind of like on a cooking storm. So I actually learned how to make spinach dip out of fresh spinach. That was awesome. Then we've been eating uh, fresh spinach almost every other day because it's grown like crazy. But I don't know what I did to my garden, but it's gone berserk. And we also have uh, gotten fresh broccoli and stuff like that. And also some radishes. And, and we got more things coming. And my point is, is I... Yeah, I mean, and I know when we're RVing, it's I really enjoy finding the farmers markets and stuff. And there's no doubt, the fresher the better. But I'm telling you, uh, if you can get it straight out of the garden into your dinner that night, oh my God, I like broccoli. I thought, I mean, I really like broccoli, but now I really like broccoli, uh, especially when it's my own, and. Uh, and you know, my salads are more enhanced now with fresh lettuce blended. I still got to blend it with like iceberg lettuce that I buy in a bag. But I'm getting so much lettuce now that I'm actually capable of making full salads now with my own lettuce, which is really awesome. And anyway, the bottom line is, is like you can't get more organic than that. But the big thing is when you get the opportunity and while you're traveling, um, do try to keep out. I mean keep an eye out for those farmers markets and things like that because uh there's definitely a step up when you can get your vegetables you know at least no more than a day or day or two old man talk about fantastic and uh so yeah i'm looking forward to that so some of the things i wanted to tell you about what we have coming up in the future is uh there is a lot of traveling but we're going to enhance it with not only with the rv the rv will be bringing in much a lot more stories uh, about that as uh, this year goes on but we're also looking at the story of and you kind of been hearing me doing the research of looking over the border at certain key areas and uh, if you've been watching his and hers alaska they're actually down in one area that we were kind of interested in but not so much uh, but in a, about a month, we are going to go check out what's called Rocky Point in, in Mexico. We're going to actually drive there. And that's going to be quite interesting, I'm sure. I've never been across the border before um, driving. And then um, the, this coming fall, our goal is to, we have three cities in mind in Mexico that we want to go for a week to on an actual vacation, but a little bit of checking out the retirement situation there so the big picture is is you know we're when we get in our 64 65 range and then we i, I gotta get sherry not have to support this guy me the kept man and uh find a way to take our fixed income between my pension and two social securities and uh an investment uh investments um to make our lives comfortable so there's no way we'd sell the house we got we this thing's a, we could rent it if we wanted to and it's a great investment um so those are the kind of research we're doing on retirement and finding a way to live comfortable with fixed incomes which kind of ties into a lot of things we were talking in prior shows about the, the van dwellers and things like that, how people are trying to make it on their fixed incomes. And uh, Sherry and I have that same dilemma. Now we have a good five years still to get this figured out. Um, and we may just keep everything the same. Um, but uh, uh, one thing I will give you a hint is we're probably going to let our boat go, not because we don't love it. Oh my God, we love our boat. We are so busy. Oh my God, I've never been so busy. Um, between the gardening, between the uh, uh, day trips and road trips. And uh, uh, for those of you who know that we do art, we do resin art. So trying to get um, some of that done. You'll see more of that as the summer gets closer. When it gets hot here, we stay indoors more. And that's when we start doing more of our resin art. And then we got, you know, Central Oregon videos are going to start coming out next week on that. And then... Uh, Mexico, we're going to have you know quite the setup of um, outdoor travel vi uh, videos about that and what we discover. And we're going to keep it real and once again to lifestyle. And we'll talk about the things that people don't want to talk about, um, but we'll also talk about the positive things we see. 
And uh, But we're not going to hold back and make it look like a glamorous thing. We're going to tell you exactly what we're seeing and whether it's even a good idea. Because, uh, I mean, I hear the situation for uh, health insurance and things like that is um, great. But I also hear that you want to also hold on to your Medicare um, and uh, in case you really have something serious happen if you're across the border and you do, and you don't want to be too far from the border, I mean, or realistic, so you could come back for any major health issues. But you can actually get yourself a very good health insurance in major cities in Mexico uh, for a very reasonable uh, price uh, uh, and have your Medicare on hand in case you have a very serious issue that you want to go back up to the states for uh, so yeah it's it's some amazing stuff but um, this is only stuff that I'm learned but I want to go see the realities of it I want to meet some of these people down there aren't you curious I mean you see these videos and you know it's just like RVing they tell you all about the great stuff they don't tell you about all the stuff like we do on the, what's really happening that's the way we want to approach this is we want to give you the real straight skinny of what Americans are doing down there and is it safe and and all those questions that we all have because a lot of us are I know a lot of folks are about the same age as me and Sherry and they got these concerns and ideas of what they're going to do when they retire and, and who wants to work forever who wants to work till they're 70 I'd sure and heck don't and as you know Sherry doesn't so Hey, let's start doing some homework together. And once again, your feedback and comments on all this subject will be welcomed. So, yeah. Anyway, that's kind of some of the things going on. And, uh, yeah, busy, busy, busy. Well, this is a message to those who are getting closer to retirement. And I want to approach those people that either procrastinate or or kind of him and a han, uh, I guess this could be more guy oriented, but I, I met women this way too, especially when I was working in the aerospace company and I was getting ready to retire is like, they looked at me like you're retiring at 55. Are you kidding me? And, uh, I need to tell you right now, uh, unless you're pathetically don't have any hobbies whatsoever or anything uh, that you like to do, I am swamped. My, I don't know the old, and this came from my father-in-law. He said the same thing after he retired from the same company I did. Uh, he, the quote he likes to use, I don't know when I had time to work because I am so busy now. And uh, I, I tell you, I am busier now than I've ever been in before I was working at that other company. And I was still doing videos and I was doing RVing and all that stuff. But I still feel even busier uh, between now of picking up new hobbies, really enjoying cooking and learning a lot about cooking. Uh, man, I might have been learning a lot about cooking. And then, of course, we've been doing our Traeger videos and uh, actually just some interesting recipes. Uh, like I did a video on Outdoor Travel Channel on making a cabbage soup which turned out so yummy. Oh my Lord, it was so good. And it's like, I, I've i never made a soup in my whole life. And I've never done some of my art stuff I've, before. And gardening, I did a little bit in the past, but never had time when I really wasn't that interested in it. Lord knows that I'd do a whole bunch of vegetables and stuff. And Lord knows I'd ever do one in Arizona. And uh, where the seasons are all messed, messed up different here. The other thing I want to remind you is, uh, when daylight saving time comes, uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but Arizona doesn't change. We don't experience that shock. And I am so glad that I do not have to deal with daylight savings time. Um, it's, you know, uh, I think it's five o'clock right now in the evening that I, and uh, the following week after daylight savings time, it's still going to be five o'clock, the same old time and same sunset and the same temperatures and and the same routine and the whole works. And so uh, I tell you, I don't miss that at all. That sometimes, especially in some places, can be kind of depressing. Uh, like in, Especially like in Washington, if it's still kind of cloudy and rainy and stuff, and they do a daylight savings time, um, man, uh, that can be a shocker. So uh, see, this time they're springing forward, 
So they'll get a little more daylight uh, during uh, the uh, evening when they get home. And that probably feels better than coming home in the dark. But uh, uh, I like that gradual thing of, you know, just letting it happen naturally. But I certainly understand why they have the system of daylight savings time. But uh, uh, I tell you, uh, if you didn't know, Arizona, we just don't do it. Just don't do it. Well, here's another thing you probably don't realize that can happen when you live in Arizona and if you have a pool. So this morning I come out in my uh, bathrobe rubbing my eyes trying to get my coffee made and just generally trying to wake up <laughs> and I go moseying into the back. So now, you know, remember it's Arizona, you can go outside and it's, you don't even have to have shoes on and, and stuff. Anyway, so I'll walk outside to go check on the garden, of course. And what do I see in the pool? A his and her ducks. Uh, yeah, a little couple. Which is not good for pools. You do not want ducks in your pool. Because what do ducks do when they get in the water? They go poo. So, it's like, really? <laughs> of all the thousands of pools in Arizona, you have to land in mine. So, uh, this was a great chance for cinder the wonder dog to come out and do her thing so it's like cinder <laughs> and so she goes running out there and she was just as shocked as i was <laughs> the dog's like what the hell are those things <laughs> but yeah it was a, a pair of them and uh yeah that um, they um, my daughters actually had had not only ducks in her show up at her pool they laid an egg on the concrete so uh yeah, we, we don't want eggs in the concrete, nor do we want ducks in our pool because they can mess up the balance of your pool really bad. So, uh, yeah, that was kind of a shocker. So there's a Arizona news you may not hear every day. And, of course, the other thing I wanted to bring up is, you know, I, I've had some controversial shows uh, prior to this that uh, brought up some really sensitive subjects and rattled a few folks, not badly, but it really had me doing some research on um well poverty uh homelessness um issues like that uh, medical fixed income folks stuff like that and i gotta tell you i, I truly are starting to appreciate uh being brought from the clouds down a little bit to realize some of the stuff that's going on that all of us need to start um paying attention to and i'm hoping that some of those uh, episodes oh, five to six episodes back which you know uh, took all kinds of versions of uh, of looking at the subject to make you think of like when is you know uh, as an investor maybe doing things for folks that need help in the future or helping or getting partic you know participating in the uh, in the community of very people that need help and of course, there's the hard part of finding those who who need help, and those who want help, and those who are not too eager to bring themselves out of their scenario. And so I know we all get worried about that. Just like you know, what community or what organizations do we donate to? Who do we help? Do you actually give money to the guy standing at the uh, you know intersection there? Uh, you know, it's really hard to find out, um, I mean, to make sure that whatever you do do, that it has an impact on the people around you. And like they say, you know, doing good things for others will, you know, will come back on you. And even if you probably try to help somebody who was actually trying to you know, actually con in you a little bit or really did need the help, or, you know, they sit in the corner and then they... Uh, as soon as they get home, they go down to a couple of parking lots and get in their BMW. And uh, so, yeah, there's a few of those around. But uh, even that, you should still feel good and grateful for what you did. Uh, your heart was in the right place. So anyway, um, the big part of it is I, I appreciate my own shows from the past of bringing me into subjects that I don't normally have uh, looked at so much, especially when it came to talking about uh, the rising cost of RV parks and uh, and how the homeless and how f some folks are getting forced out of the RV parks and pushed into homelessness and 
And then, uh, of course, I go out and do all the homework and the videos and, and do research on what's really going on out there. And I even hop in the car and go look for myself. And uh, I was enlightened, you might say. Um, and some real realities were uh, exposed to me and Sherry and um, uh, made us more grateful, much more grateful for what we already have. And I guess that's really, you know, getting down to is be grateful for what you have right now. Live for the now. Always look for the future and always plan. There's nothing wrong with that. But occasionally you need to smell the roses. That's that time where you just stop and say, you know, hey, things are going pretty good right now. Or think, you know, right now, this moment, I'm having a good day. Soak it in. Enjoy it. And so, uh, like, you know, I have a friends right now. Uh, some of them are going through medical issues and or have a spouse out and stuff like that. And I always wish them the best. Uh, and it's really hard to uh, pull yourself out of the clouds of, or dark clouds of gloom and doom type thing. But we all have been in that scenario and we've all pulled ourselves out or need to pull ourselves out. Um, I mean, 2008 was ugly for me and Sherry and we probably saw the bottom of the barrel of everything that could have happened to us. And you just kick and scream and, and keep moving forward and, and it looks bleak and you don't know how you're going to get out of it. And five years later, you look back and going, I'm sure glad I was kicking and screaming. So anyway, guys, uh, I hope some of those older episodes uh, may, uh, if you look at them in a way of, you know, Rob brought up some stuff that I never thought about or I wasn't exposed to or maybe I've never looked before. I'm hoping that's what some of those episodes did for you. It sure helped me and Sherry. And I, I, I feel much more enlightened and a little more educated about what's going on around me here, especially here in Arizona. Well, it's been kind of funny lately. I don't know if it's a coincidence or what, but uh, uh, I've been running into a lot of nomad travelers um, that are not using RVs. Um, so it's, kind of interesting and in, in some cases it almost seems more cost effective all these channels i've been uh, monitoring are actually uh, utilizing what's called airbnb which i've never used but my wife and i have finally looked them up and it turns out it's kind of a system for people to rent out um, their timeshares or their uh, apartments or their vacation homes to people um, for short periods of time uh, we were looking at some uh, for maybe going down to Mexico. Um, his and hers, Alaska, they were utilizing one uh, when they were down in Mexico. And all of these independent travelers, a lot of them are couples that travel either the United States or abroad, uh, use the Airbnb a lot. So it's um, kind of amazing. So it's almost like a new form of, if you don't want any um, mortgage and you don't want it, to have the responsibility of an RV, don't do either. <laughs> Just live off the, find some kind of little base that you can uh, hang out, maybe your parents or something like that, and and uh, for all your main, main stuff, and uh, just throw what you can in the backpack or suitcase, and off you go. So yeah, um, it's kind of different. But before uh, we do go any farther, I do want to once again, uh, Thank God, uh, a Ford refrigeration, RV uh, refrigeration folks. Uh, they've been wonderful. Uh, they have a great program. They also have a special deal for people that listen to uh, RV Talk Radio. So uh, I want to make sure and give them a recognition, and here they are. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, 
we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. They really do have a great uh, training program and they also support the uh, military, which is wonderful. And boy, I tell you, that is such a good way. If you got a knack or you like to work on RVs, learning RV refrigeration and then learning RV inspection and get certified in both to invest some money into yourself will give you a long term way to. Uh, Maybe you think about either retiring early or hitting the road before you retire. Uh, it's a, There's some great programs out there. So, uh, yeah. And then uh, getting hooked up with some other folks like uh, RV Travel or uh, RV Education 101 and stuff like that. Um, you could get yourself some pretty good credentials that you could go almost anywhere and always have work not to mention you could even go over the border and probably have lots of work too so yeah um, nothing beats investing a little so, uh, money in yourself your education your future well you know with some of the uh, shows I've done in the past I brought up some interesting subjects which means I get a lot more stories and uh, I have a gentleman I know is named Phil and uh, he uh, he's up in Oregon, I believe, and they've been uh, living in, uh, I believe it's kind of a uh, senior, uh, low-income kind of housing for uh, well, seniors. And apparently there's either changes going on or prices going up, things like that. And... Uh, um, I guess the point I was going to bring up is, and they're looking at and being forced into possibly getting an RV to find a way to live on their fixed income. And so uh, I guess the big part is um, bringing all this up is, and I brought it up earlier in the show, is uh, um, how some of this stuff comes up to the surface. And uh, when you live a certain way, whether you're middle class, well to do, uh, um, doing your nine to five and stuff, it's really easy to uh, uh, filter yourself from seeing all this stuff. I guess it's kind of like these celebrities and stuff. They're all like doing all these little um, political things, and yet they're really not in touch with actual real people. And uh, and it happens to us too. Um, just by either not exposing yourself to it, not looking, walking right by it, or whatever. Um, it's sad. Um, I guess I, 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 I see RVing in such a more broad way now than I ever have before. Uh, when I first started the show, it was all about getting an RV and traveling. And now the RV, um, whether it's the economy, the changing times, uh, cost of living uh, has uh, at least I've been exposed to how much farther people are using the RV as a tool or a piece of equipment to just make it <laughs> just to survive um, now there's others you know I, I put on the spot that are doing it cuz uh, they're just kinda living for the now and and uh, running YouTube channels and stuff, but there's some serious things going on out there uh, when it comes to fixed income people, disability people, uh, uh, military people, maybe even a uh, mental health issue, people on disabilities, uh, fixed income, social security, fixed income, uh, pensions. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, you know, it's turning out to be an alternative whether it's better or not, I don't know. I mean, it, um, between an RV, maybe a park model or something like that, uh, I don't know. Uh, the I can't say it's all gloom and doom because I see perfectly happy people that are just doing that. And they have beautiful RVs or beautiful park models, and they're doing great. And then we got these other folks that are... Um, below that a little bit that are just struggling to hold on to something over their head where they have at least you know sleeping accommodations a little kitchen a nice place to enjoy tv or have a friend over 
and uh, you know a bathroom and restroom and facilities and and uh, try you know and and uh, be able to afford it and eat too and deal with medicals and costs and gas and things like that. So uh, once again, I'm not bringing up the bleakness of it, but I do wish that those who have been watching our show or listening to our shows are also catching the the lifestyle of the stuff um, and where it's going to go from here. And what I'm afraid of is more rules and regulations due to abuse, um, less places to park, um, requirements for newer RVs and RV parks, which are already happening. RV parks being bought up where they're too expensive for someone with a lower income to afford. Um, then there's also what good things are going out there, like are there more affordable RVs to buy that are newer? Are there newer pl uh, new places to take your RV? Will they open up more BLM land or more places like that for people to do 14-night stays? Um, it would be really nice to see if we know this is a reality, then, uh, you know, uh, we can't rely just on Walmarts to do things. And, of course, some of those remarks are Walmarts are reversing their decision to allow people to park overnight in their parking lots and things like that. And then there's those cases up here in Flagstaff where they're letting people stay longer than just one day in the Walmart uh, because of homelessness and low-income, fixed-income people. And the mayor even knows it and has actually waived the ordinance uh, because it's better to have them have a place to live than to hide and go into places they shouldn't be. So the common sense of, you know, of that is there too. So where I'm going with this, I have no idea. Other than every time I do a show now, it's like, well, yeah, I, I, there's always the fun. There's always the travel, the adventure, stuff like that. But um, there's this other side. I don't want to say it's the dark side. It's the, a real side of RVs and RVing that uh, is starting to come bubble up to the surface. And, uh, you know, I look at this guy named Bob who has this um, uh, cheap RVing thing where he's, he's like recruiting nomads, which kind of concerns me. It's like um, I've ever seen other people doing videos to re recruit RVers that are educated and make high income. <laughs> You know, that's kind of why we went on the war path. It's like, okay, this guy can sit there and preach, hey, come on out and be a nomad and learn how to live in a cheap van. Who's the advocate out there saying, okay, well, buy an RV, but get an education, get a degree or get a skill or something like that and go out there and, and make a killing and have fun traveling also. Who's doing that? <laughs> Me, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, so that's that's the rationality we've had is like we have the advocates for nomads. We have the advocates for the freedom, live the life, live for the now. Who's the advocate for the RVer that one is either employed, retired, um, or wants a skill or wants to work while they're in their RV? Maybe they're not a programmer, maybe, but... You know, we're looking at all these alternatives like RV refrigeration and RV inspection programs. And I'm not really pushing that work camp or stuff because it's not really the program that's going to give you a long-term solution to uh, to uh, surviving out there. And, of course, now uh, we'll be introducing over-the-border stuff. And uh, we'll see much more of that on this show as we learn more. And we're going to pass that on to you uh, as we learn what is available to Americans going over the border, whether it's Canada or whether it's Mexico or some other place. And, uh, you know, how do we get the most bang out of our buck and live a good life? We only have one shot at this life. So if you're struggling every single day, then that's not much of a life. Um so whether you're making good income or not, um, you can be making really good income and still be just struggling. It's like uh, people don't understand. You could be in Seattle paying for a four hundred thousand dollar house, going through the, um, 
trying to get through all that commuting and all that stuff and make you know between the two of you 150 200,000 a year and still be struggling to make it every month i know that's hard to believe but that's just the realities of it so you know um how does the rv play into all this and that's the kind of things that we'll stay on and bring stories to you about and uh of course when we do shows like this uh, the more people that send us stuff and information about their rv experiences and some of them are sad some of them are amazing some of them are like really <laughs> and some of them are like wow i'd like to do that so anyway just be warned you know we'll not always be consistent on one story but we will be bringing you all these things that are coming up that could affect you could affect RVing, could affect how you might want to address your retirement uh, whether you're retiring at 55 or anything after that and uh, that's a concern of mine and is a concern of a lot of people I know especially the you know us baby boomers so yeah anyway keep your uh, keep <laughs> keep your ears open well i had to do it guys you know uh, uh, a lot of uh, i know a lot of folks that follow the freedom free, the freedom theory folks and uh, josh and kaylee and we've met them personally and a uh, very nice couple and i actually saw the video come out a day or two and i kind of like i kind of um hesitated and i was like really they showed the you know pictures of their uh baby being born and stuff and it's like all right i'm gonna finally watch this thing uh because it's like sometimes you, especially at our age you go when is enough is enough when is it that we keep some things sacred well anyway so i watched the video and, and I, I i must admit it was very good um it was uh because i know them and i've met them it, it was um, emotional for me and Sherry because you know we know them and we know how important and how much uh, back then before that we talked to them about families and stuff and they were looking forward to a time of having their own child and so uh, we couldn't help but you know root root for them and and uh, um, they did the very uh, they did the video very well very tasteful uh, I, I give her a th thumbs up she spends a lot of time with her videos and stuff up but i have noticed there's been less videos and and i'm not surprised if it does taper off and uh give them a chance to get a grasp of how they they probably even know people tell them and stuff they have no idea how their life is going to change and uh, uh it may actually even affect the fact whether they travel anymore it's amazing how your life when your children come into your life, uh, it's all about them. So uh, when people say, well, what have you been doing? Um, you know, for 20, 25 years, um, our life was devoted to our kids. And, and everything we did, every direction we went was in the benefit of our kids. And uh, the funny part is, is, is maybe I should do more videos about uh, when you get the empty nest, you don't know what to do with yourself. And uh, it actually took Sherry and I probably five, six years to figure out how to live without the kids um, when they, you know, go off on their own. And uh, so that's a whole nother story in itself. But I remember the first time when someone told me, well, <laughs> when Sherry says, I'm pregnant. And, <laughs> and she was 20, we were 21. I remember that look of, when I heard that news of uh, going blank and silent. And so, of course, your wife goes, are you upset? It's like, no, it's like this big rush of reality starts slapping you upside the head, something fierce, like, oh, my God, I'm going to be a father. I I can't do these things anymore, and I, I, I get rid of the motorcycle. <laughs> uh, do I have the room? Can I provide? Do I have a... Uh, can I do it? And, and can we do it? And how's it going to affect us? And I guess we can, you know, all the way of life that you've always had all of a sudden is like, oh my God. And it's not for bad or, or worse. It's, 
it's just big change. And even just that was just comprehending the first time that you know our daughter came along. We had a son after that, um, and realizing that all through our life for 25 years, uh, everything we did, whether where whatever schools we were around, what house we owned, we were at, was all about what's best for the kids, and uh, what can we expose them to. I mean, yes, traveling and all that stuff was, uh, you know, we did lots of camping and outdoor things, but also the foundation of things that they need to grow uh, is important too. So that's why I always kind of wonder about this RV lifestyle and children. Yes, I can, I mean, yeah, there's pros and cons. I understand that. But uh, I'm just saying it would be interesting to watch this journey. Uh, and, you know, um, you tend to try to do what you know best, but life has funny ways of putting a twist in all that. And, and you may think you're going to go straight and you end up going right or left. And uh, it'll be interesting. There'll be a, a good journey to watch because of the realities of family and uh, your family development. And uh, now it's all about that child it really is it's uh you try to be a couple but it's really a family you're a unit and uh it will always be about the unit until that unit <laughs> breaks up which it's supposed to and then you go back to being you and your husband or husband and wife uh partner and then you go oh what now <laughs> and yeah so hey Congratulations to uh, Josh and Kaylee. We're very happy for them, and we're fortunate to get to know them early uh, before all this and got to have personal conversations to understand some of their goals and seeing them uh, have, uh, you know, with health issues and stuff like that, having a healthy uh, child and, and everything going so positive. We are tickled pink for them. So. Good luck, you guys, and we uh, look forward to seeing how your life is going to change and um, uh, how your life's going to develop now that you're a family unit. So, yep, nice. Well, I wanted to recommend a product that I've been using. I did a video on the other day, but I have been doing a whole bunch of uh, drying or using a dehydrator. And uh, it's been fun because what I'll do is buy like two bags of apples, cut them up into uh, uh, quarters and cut those in half and and uh, drying fruit. And uh, we'll, we'll dip them in water that has lemon, sugar, and uh, that's it. And uh, then uh, I may sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on the apples and I do it with pears too. And we've been eating that stuff like candy, which is better than candy. <laughs> So I highly, and I don't care if you're in an RV or not, they have little ones, the little white round ones you've probably seen, but ours is a step up. It's got a 15 drawer, um, bigger one that uh, runs a little heavier heat. It got it at Cabela's. And I just love the thing. Um, our biggest thing we like to make is is pears and apples. Apples um, are uh, yummy and that stuff. But I've actually made beef jerky in it before too, and they've come out wonderful too. Uh, but now I have the Traeger. I can actually make my uh, my jerky uh, that way and get a little bit more smokier taste. But yeah, um, been doing a lot of that. And, and of course, I told you next week we're leaving to head up to uh, the RV. And so I'm making up a whole nother batch and they're cooking as I'm doing this show uh, because I'd rather be munching on those. That's the worst thing. I don't know if you guys go through this, but when you're traveling, do you eat like crap? <laughs> Do you eat like garbage that you shouldn't? You know, you keep like chips and uh, pretzels and stop and buy uh, uh, big drinks from uh, big things of Coke from McDonald's and stuff like that. And and while you're doing your drive and you realize you've just been eating garbage the whole time. So um, I've been trying real hard to uh, avoid that if I can. And, uh, of course, you know, when I'm driving with Cinder, she's got to have her French fries. So every once in a while, I got to go to McDonald's so get some French fries so her and I can chow out together. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> Other than that, uh, she really likes dried apples too. So uh, uh, between our new garden and doing our own uh, organic garden and stuff like that, Cinder's been eating actually very well. She's been eating lots of greens <laughs> and, and <laughs> lots of carrots and and uh, she also uh, gets to have dried fruit with us once in a while and and uh, every once in a while I'll give her something like uh, you got to be careful you can't give them avocado you can't share uh, uh, what was the other thing I get oh onion anything with onion onions are not supposed to be good for dogs either <laughs> so be careful on that kind of stuff um, but yes yeah, cinder will eat asparagus <laughs> green beans <laughs> she likes cucumbers <laughs> it's like I should have a very healthy dog, <laughs> but uh, but she most of all she really likes the dried apples. So yeah, she's a spoiled little stinker, isn't she? I think the other thing that's going to shock me starting to head up north is I've forgotten how to be cold. <laughs> and, uh, I'll probably get sick because I so I like I hardly wear shoes anymore. It's sandals all the time. Always a short sleeve shirt. We never wear coats down here, um, maybe sweaters, but uh, that's the worst that it gets. And then heading up to uh, Oregon, it's like, uh, you know, they get down into the 30s uh, and lower, even this time of year, and I think this is March. And, uh, yeah, um, I, I'm kind of fearful for being cold. Um, at the same time, it's kind of refreshing and, and I guess you got to, you know, you got to do that kind of stuff so you can appreciate where you do live. Um, you know, it's, there's a lot of things like that. Sometimes you got to do stuff to appreciate other stuff. That makes sense. It's just like, it's like, I always talk about people putting in their time and careers and stuff like that. And you got to earn your keep. Well, how do you know if you're having a good time enjoying life if you haven't toughed it out and done the hard part of the nine to five and building it all that and then learning how to relax and realize you know how hard you work for it how you know so good and bad are definitely positive negative kind of thing uh you gotta have both and unfortunately uh, you wish you never had the negative but if you can always take that negative and turn it into something positive and in this case, it's just hot and cold, so I kind of get used to going up there and wearing a jacket. Can't have the window open anymore, but Cinder can stay in the car if I like uh, have to run into a store. She's not gonna uh, go have a heat, you know, heat stroke. So uh, there is benefits about the cooler weather, um, but I'm also got to get used to everything being wet and pine needles and things like that. And uh, uh, I'm not. I mean, I'm excited, and I'm and it'll be nice to see a lot of green, but uh, cold and wet just doesn't sound appealing to me anymore. Once again, I mean, because I mean, I've been there, lived it for years, but now that I've had this dry climate and sunshine and sitting out in the porch at nine o'clock in the morning, um, walking outside in a bathrobe with slippers on at midnight and still be warm. Um, I don't know. It's it's pretty nice. I, I really enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, Arizona's, we're very happy here. And I'm sure everybody's happy in our different places too. But um, take a good look at Arizona someday, guys. And uh, um, realize, you know, nine months out of the year is summertime. And then there's that hot trend. But uh, if you got some good hobbies and stuff, and then like Sherry and I, we have our resin art and things like that we do. Uh, we and we love to go on road trips then to get out of the heat. So it works out great for us. So, But anyway, we're getting towards the end of the hour here, and I want to thank you so much. This has been kind of a jump around kind of show today. Uh, we uh, have so much coming up. Oh, my gosh. And I, I'm not even sure where we'll start or where I'll go, but... Uh, I'll be taking another break next week because I'll be traveling, so I I won't be able to cut a show. I don't think. Um, so uh, uh, I think uh, the shows will be more like an every other week thing until we get some of this traveling all going here, and then before you know it, we'll be pumping out shows like crazy. So anyway, uh, I want to thank everybody for the great feedback and comments, and keep them coming. We always ask you to be professional. 
And also realize this is a radio show, so we bring up subjects we don't necessarily uh, think or is our opinion, but sometimes we'll talk like it is um, to just get the view of other people. So anyway, uh, uh, relax. If we hit a show that kind of uh, twangs you a little bit, the next show will be just the opposite. So, um you know, that positive negative thing. Anyway, so we appreciate the great feedback. Just be professional. Anyway, you guys, please be safe out there. Please enjoy RVing. Please uh, share your, your comments and your, uh, and your uh, feedback to us. We like it. And most of all, guys, be safe and buy yourself an IRV. Talk to you next time. Bye now. We want to thank everyone for listening and watching RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos. I mean share them all over the whole wide world. We'd really appreciate it. Talk to you later. Bye now.